Hey, it's Lou, and here's the thing. Podcasts are having a moment. A March 2019 cover of New York Magazine declared it the golden age of podcasts. Late last year, a New Yorker article examined the podcast boom. A month later, an opinion piece in the LA Times claimed that the podcast revolution is here to stay. Statistics support the buzz. An estimated 62 million Americans are weekly podcast listeners, according to Edison Research. That's an increase of 14 million people from 2018. Then there's all the money pouring into the space. Spotify just bought two podcast companies for about $340 million. The streaming giant plans to spend as much as a half billion more on podcast acquisitions before the end of the year. This excitement, growth, and investment is fueled by the unique attributes of the medium. Podcasts foster intimacy, encourage imagination, and integrate well into modern life. And importantly, many podcasts have improved upon a feature of TV, radio, and digital media that we all hate. I'm talking about ads. Some host-read podcast ads are so entertaining, listeners have complained when they've been eliminated. The question is, can the podcasting industry live up to the great expectations that come with hype and corporate backers without losing the qualities that have made it so special? This episode is brought to you by Beam. No one accidentally listens to a podcast. That may sound obvious, but think about other forms of media. Digital video, for instance, often appears randomly on websites and social media feeds, obnoxiously calling out for our attention when we probably intended to do something else. Meanwhile, television and radio have so much filler content, so much stuff that likely doesn't interest us that we tend to flip around and half-heartedly consume something. According to a 2018 Nielsen report, 45% of respondents always or very often use digital devices like smartphones while watching TV. Jeremy Morris, Associate Professor of Media and Cultural Studies at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, told me that podcasts, on the other hand, are an intentional medium. Users seek them out. Yet, Emma Rodero, a communications professor at UPF in Barcelona, told me that unlike reading a book, which requires your undivided attention, podcasts can be easily incorporated into the demands of 21st century life. In a stressful age in which we are always feeling like we have to do something stimulating, listening to podcasts turns routine activities like driving, showering, and household chores into a productive experience. Podcasts don't compete with Netflix. Instead, they bring substance to otherwise mindless experiences. Rodero added that audio forces us to do a lot of cognitive of work. Since there are no pre-packaged visual cues, as there are with TV and film, we have to create our own mental images. We have to use our imagination. In fact, a 2016 paper in the science journal Nature found that listening to podcasts activates emotional and memory networks across both hemispheres of the brain. That's much more activity than previously thought and explains why so many of us find podcasts engrossing. Rodero also told me that books and magazines may seem to have the same type of engaging characteristics, but the human voice fosters a level of intimacy and engagement that is unique. I'm Michael Barbaro. This is The Daily. This personal connection between podcaster and listener not only leads to an absorbing storytelling experience, it also makes the audience receptive to marketing messages. You trust the host. Vulture reported that when a focus group was asked why they went to Hotels.com, they said, because Ira Glass told me to, a reference to the NPR personality who is considered the godfather of podcasting. It's This American Life. I'm Ira Glass. Stay with us. Members of his staff went on to produce mega hits Serial and S-Town. Vulture also reported that the most successful shows earn well over $50,000 for a single host read ad. Morris told me that many podcasters put such a unique and personalized spin on marketing messages that fans actually complain when the ads are eliminated, as was the case with the show called Hollywood Handbook. Personally, I always chuckle at Mark Maron's Just Coffee ads. Pow! I just shit my pants. Just Coffee.coop. The fact that I can recall the advertiser's name demonstrates the marketing power of podcasts. 
In addition, Andrew Bottomley, assistant professor of media studies at SUNY Oneonta, told me the podcasting audience is particularly attractive to advertisers because they are a coveted demographic, young, well-educated, and upper middle class. For example, NPR says 85% of their podcast listeners have a bachelor's degree, and more than half have a household income in excess of $75,000, which is 25% higher than the median household income. I asked Tom Webster, Senior Vice President of Edison Research, if this means podcasts are elitist. He told me that the medium may have started out covering topics that overlap with HBO documentaries, but now there are plenty of shows that resemble the types of broadly appealing formats you'd find on network TV, like 2020 or Dateline. In other words, a big selection for a growing audience. No surprise then that the Interactive Advertising Bureau estimates that US podcast advertising revenue is expected to reach $659 million by 2020. Big numbers like that, unsurprisingly, are attracting venture capital and leading to acquisitions like Spotify's recent splurge on Gimlet and Anchor. In addition, film and TV studios have been flocking to the space to find source material with a winning track record like two dope queens. Yes, queen, yes. Now, Bottomley explained that these Spotify acquisitions make sense because podcasts directly compete with Spotify's core product, streaming music. Webster told me that streaming music comes with expensive royalty fees, so podcasts are a way for Spotify to diversify their offerings at a relatively low cost. Bottomley added that he wouldn't be surprised if Spotify started to aggressively pursue audiobooks too, in an effort to be the dominant player in the competition for our ears. But Morris is concerned that this corporatization might impact podcasting in negative ways. For starters, accessibility and independence were foundational characteristics of podcasting. So if popular shows start moving behind paywalls to pursue the profit motive, that might fundamentally transform the democratic spirit of the medium. Bottomly compare this dynamic to your favorite indie band selling out. In addition, the ease of producing and distributing podcasts initially created a level playing field. But now, Morris worries that big players like Spotify and Apple will put marketing money and platform power behind their branded shows, making it difficult for indie productions to crack the charts and get attention. After all, corporations have a sneaky way of leading you towards discovery. Webster pushed back on this notion a bit, reminding me that most people choose to become podcasters because they have something to say, not because they want to get rich or famous. If you're interesting at all, you should do a podcast. He added that all this investment and hype brings attention to the medium, which can boost everyone's listenership. However, Bottomley told me it's important to contextualize all the buzz. He told me talk of the golden age of podcasts and the podcasting revolution is driven by industry boosters that are trying to draw attention to the space and journalists who tend to focus on the newest entrance into an industry and not necessarily the biggest ones. He's got a point. Yes, Edison Research estimates that the number of Americans who've listened to a podcast grew by 20 million from 2018 to 2019. And yes, advertising revenue is up and expected to keep climbing according to the IAB. But in the grand scheme of things and compared with other mediums, podcasts aren't that popular. Consider survey results from Edison Research reveal that American motorists are much more likely to listen to CDs than to podcasts. And by the way, the podcasting medium isn't that new either. In fact, podcast was the new Oxford American Dictionary Word of the Year in 2005, the same year Apple described its podcast platform as TiVo for radio. Bottomly told me the roots of podcasting trace even further back than that. Many of the most popular modern formats, true crime shows like Serial or star-studded dramas like Homecoming, are very similar to radio content from the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. The advertising back then, including host-read ads with personality, also provides precedent for how podcasts approach marketing. Autolite and its 60,000 dealers and service stations present Gregory Peck in Michael Venning's Murder Through the Looking Glass. Bottomley said new media companies tend to reject that connection because radio has this old, boring connotation. But we ignore history at our own peril because we can learn from the mistakes and innovations that have already happened. We ought to let the past serve as a compass and lead us towards a sustainable trajectory for a medium so many of us love. Okay, I'm gonna go live my life.